Oh, version. okay. Um, greetings to everyone. Uh, thank you very much, bro. Trial version. This was really Ooh. insightful, and I have been noting from from the very beginning of of of, of your speech. I think this is what we really need in this continent. We need individuals that has been there before us. And basically, this is the purpose of knowledge. This is the purpose of going to school. This is the purpose of getting education. It is about action. It is about impacting in the life of societies. And today, that is the role that you're playing. We young people are proud to stand everywhere and say, we look up to you. And that we can say freely without apologizing to anyone. So thank you so much for this great deliberation. And to my brothers and sisters in Nigeria, thank you so much for organizing such an event. We look forward to having engagement all around the continent where African youths can meet and discuss about African problem. Because I, I believe that we have pertinent issues. We have difficulties all over the continent. But then we are the generation that have a mandate. We are the generation that need to sacrifice in making sure that some of these things become a thing of the We can combat corruption in Africa. We can solve the problem of leadership and we can solve our poverty and we can make sure that we set a pattern of development that actually entails the African values, the African reality, and shaping a trajectory for other generations to come. We can do that as a youthful population. And that is why it is very, very key that we continue to organize forums like this, where young people come together to identify key things, develop solutions to them, and then we keep on adjusting. And some other issues which is very, very particular here. Just recently, we have seen the NSAS protests in Nigeria where youths of Nigeria came out of the streets demanding for reforms in their system. And it was in the words of Prof that when the youths of Nigeria wakes up, Africa will never be the same. So we, we in Africa and every part of the continent, Nigeria is a country that we can all look up to for reference. But for Nigeria to be in that position, so many things has to change. Nigeria has to lead the continent in terms of good governances. Nigeria has to lead the continent in terms of combating corruption. Nigeria had to lead the continent in terms of progress. But today, when we look at poverty in Africa, when we look at bad governance in Africa, when we look at corruption in Africa, we come to realize that the countries that we are supposed to look up to, to correct our own mistakes, are the individuals in the center of those very issues. So I believe that we as youths of this continent, and this is our time for us to make the call. We can do all the necessary changes, but we have to work by cooperating. We have to work by understanding each other. We have to work by bridging the gap that happens within the continent. Let us see us as Africans first. Let us see the continental interest first. Let us see us as a people, but not as individuals representing particular tribes. We are full to things that are meaningless, making us to focus on things that are meaningful in shaping the Africa that we want. Mm -hmm. Africans have to promote platforms that involve all African youths to come together, sit and diagnose a particular problem, develop a solution to it, and then we start to move some of these things first. When we look at it just recently, Africa has signed the free trade agreement. And what is the expectation? That before, you know, um, 2063, before such particular years, Africa is going to have that good regional integration and et cetera. But then how is the implementation of such programs going to be? you come to realize that it is always very difficult in a sense that implementation failures occur where people don't see themselves as the owners of such projects. And we equally don't have the political will where you see a particular country making it difficult for other individuals. 
where you see African investors making it very difficult for them. So all these issues are things that affect the African society. And if we want to uh, um, finish all those things, or if we want to defeat that, we must promote integration. We must promote unity, love among ourselves as a people. On that note, I thank you all. It is true that in many African countries, including your own, the political leadership have fallen short of the expectations of the people. It is true that Nigeria and indeed the rest of Africa do better in our infrastructure, agriculture. It is true that we could do better with our education. It is true that we could indeed be on the cusp of enjoying the dividends of the fourth industrial revolution. It is true that indeed Africa is capable of being great. It is true that we are capable of doing many things. It is true that this century is potentially a century for Africa, but will we ever get there? Will Africa merely be great in prospect? Can we punch with other people or politics to a certain extent? We follow the great exhortation of Ghana, Kwame Nkrumah, and we sought what we thought was the political kingdom, but did we gain it? Did we really gain our independence? Uh, we who are former colonized by France are still a part of the French speaking countries in Africa. And the leader is effect effectively Belgians. You are still looking to Brussels. And those who are colonized by the Portuguese, you still look to Lisbon. Are we really free? Is it not the case that a Bukinabe feels closer to France than they do to Nigeria? Is it not true that a Kodi Ivoirian feels closer to France than they, than they do to Guinea-Bissau? Is it not true that the Angolans and the Guinea-Bissau and the Cabo Verdeans and the Mozambicans feel closer to Lisbon than they do to Namibia? Is it not true that we are a continent which ought to reassess herself and that we can only do so if you young men and women who are assembled here were to take a solemn vow that you will conquer the ghost of fear and selfishness and low self-esteem and you go out into the world to be the salt of, salt of the world in order to change Africa? Is it not true that you are assembled here no more about the presidents of the United States of America than you do of Malawi? Is it not true that you girls who are there, you are much more persuaded to use perfumes that are made in France? You men, is it not true that you are persuaded to wear shoes from Italy and that you cannot dare wear any clothes that are made, made in Kaduna or in the Democratic Republic of Congo? Is it not true that you celebrate when you visit European capitals, but you don't mention it when you visit an African capital? These are the questions that we must ask because history has demonstrated not once, not twice, that when a society rises, it rises on the shoulders of our young people. Permit me to share with you the history of other civilizations in the world. I remember so very vividly in 1906, a great South African, Pixley Kaisa Kaseme, was a student in the United States in Colombia. And I remember him talking about the regeneration of Africa and him saying that it's only young Africans who could change Africa. And I remember courtesy of him in 1912, the African National Congress was formed and they fought apartheid from generation to generation from Albert Lutuli to Pixley Kaisa Kaseme to Nelson Polisa Mandela to Walt 
is now discredited to Cyril Ramaphosa, to Thabo Mbeki, killed the ogre that is known as apartheid. They were young and energetic. They were young people. I remember in Africa, if you permit me to mention a few, in Mali, there was Modibo Keita. In Algeria, there was Ahmed Ben Bella. In Guinea-Bissau and Cape Verde, there was Amilcar Cabral. In your own Nigeria, there was a Nambi Azikiwe or Bafemi Awolowo and the Saudaner of Sokoto, although you may have a quarrel with him, Sir Ahmad Patrice Emery Lumumba in the Congo. There was Kwame Kuruma in Ghana. There was Julius Kambarage in Tanzania, Apollo Milton Obote in Uganda. Jomo Kenyatta in Kenya, and indeed Kenneth Kaunda in Afaso, and Sam Nuyoma in Namibia, and many others. They were young. History has demonstrated throughout the ages that it is only when young people rise that the society changes. And this is not unique to Africa. In 1908, in Turkey, in order to change the direction of the Turkish environment, under the Igis and the operations of Kamal Attar took, they gave the world a phrase that we now use so very liberally, the young Turks. They were young and they changed Turkey and Turkey has never been the same again. I remember in the United States of America in, 1930, in 1963, during the civil rights movement, it was a young Martin Luther King Jr., a young Andrew Young, a young Jackson, a young Ralph Abernathy that were in the struggle. And I remember in South Africa a little later, it was a young Bantu Stephen Biko, it was a young Tiro Ngopote who were leading the struggle. And it did not stop there. Even in Europe in 1968, during the student movement, it is the young people who are present. And a little more recently in the Arab world, in the so-called Arab Springs, in Tunisia, in Libya, in Egypt, in Algeria, it was the young people who were in the forefront of political change. And a little more recently, it is young people in Sudan who saw the departure of Omar al-Bashir and his young people in Mali who saw the change of government there. I'm submitting to us that indeed it is you young people who today must take a solemn vow that you will initiate change in your country. You will initiate change economically. You will initiate change socially. You will initiate change politically. You will engage political leadership, not with the arrogance that will inflame their anger, but with the firmness and the dignity that will open their eyes. The burden is yours. The choice is yours. You can choose to drown yourself in lamentation, in blame game, but remember that the world and fortune favors the vigilant. There is no other avenue for changing your countries other than to engage. And when you engage, you must remember that you belong to a country which is potentially the greatest country on earth. And therefore, you must be dignified and disciplined at all times, because dignity and discipline are the mother's milk of sustainable success. So today, mine is to urge you to change your mind, to, en to ensure that your mental orientation is designed and devised to ensure that you change Nigeria so that Nigeria ceases to be an economy which is 400 billion United States dollars. Nigeria should be a 2 trillion United States dollar economy in the next five years. And it's only going to happen when you young men and women engage in activities that are going to make Nigeria great again. She can be great. Nigeria has over 500 cultures, and I want to submit to you that that cultural diversity is a mosaic. It is a power, because the God that we worship is a God of diversity. I can imagine to myself, if Nigeria were to use the entrepreneurship 
of the Igbo who are known to engage in enterprise and succeed like success itself. If they were to also deploy the intellectual capacity of the Yoruba and use that dignity combined with the Igbo entrepreneurship, and if they were to use positively the elegance of the Fulani and the Hausa and the Ijo and the Ibibio and all the others that I have no time to mention, Nigeria can be great because as the saying goes, it needs the black keys of a piano and the white ones of a piano to produce melodious music. Don't emphasize the things that divide you emphasize the things that unite you because unity is the mother of success, sustainable progress. Today, mine is to share only one thing with you, that Nigeria will only be great when her young people, her young men and women take a solemn vow that from today onwards, you are coming out of this meeting in Anambra and you are going to go out into Nigeria, go out into Nigeria, go south into Port Harcourt, go west and go into Lagos and Abelkuta, go north into Kaduna, go to the center in Abuja and let Nigeria be shaken. Be shaken because you have a message of hope. Be shaken because you have a message that is going to transform her so that she can be great again so that she can be the leader in West Africa, so that she can be the leader in Africa, so that she can be the leader in the world, and that that leadership will not be a leadership that is used to undermine others, but is used to strengthen others. Go out there and serve. The world is waiting to be served. Nigeria is waiting to be served. Serve her. Be blessed. version. Hello. Yeah, Trial thank you so version. much, Professor Kibolo Mulukmamba, for that wonderful presentation. We appreciate you for that. And uh, Trial version. our members listening keenly to that presentation where you expose the fact that Trial version. if we work together as a people and as a team, we will go places. We thank you so much for all that has together for him once again. Of course, we are doing this because it's not going to like you. Right Trial now, version. it's time for question interaction and reaction. I'm the honorable member of the house. Trial version. All right, Paul, uh, we have a few questions for you, and um, we'll take it from the members that Trial are gathered version. here that listen to you attentively. So I'll, I'll move the microphone around, Trial and version. I hope you hear what we say and so. down. And, and let me acknowledge the young Ture Osman, who is listening all the way from Banjul in the Gambia. Wow, that's Trial great. Version. And of course, a lot of Nigerians are keyed online too, listening to you on Facebook. Trial version. So we go to the Honorable Member, Engineer Chris Azubogo. Trial Chris version. Chris. Okay, please have questions. questions. Trial version. He takes last. Questions. Trial version. We had him attentively. We listened. We had what he said. So it's time to take questions. Trial version. Yes. You know something happened. It fell. Mm -hmm. So my hand touched the screen. Once the hand touched, just leave it. Trial like version. Maybe I'll be the first to ask. Oh, we didn't hear him very well. Trial version. Thank you, sir. So please remember. You introduce yourself, your name, and trial version. You now take the question so that he will know where you're coming from. Trial version. I want to thank the Professor Mumba. Trial version. Trial version. Trial version. 
And SARS protests. Um, we saw the way the youth trial version elect their voice to have their say on something they consider that is not going well. Trial version. And we also saw how uh, um, both trial version authority uh, carefully mobilized us trial version. Trial version. We saw the 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 security uh, apparatus of the government trying to suppress Trial version. youth on not saying what they want to say or having the want to have in their nation. Trial version. This whole situation has to have in Nigeria, and I want to stress to let the voice to the parents. Trial version. The new cause. There are so many things that we still want to say. The we have, uh, how do we say this? Trial version. We say, where would we stand to say this? So I want to to help us to chat the new government. Trial version. How to communicate with our leaders so that they will hear us. I have only mentioned our bad techniques. Trial version. And whatever we are doing. And as I believe, and you know what happened. Trial version. And you can help advise us on how to do it better. Thank you. Trial version. Hello. Trial version. The question we will be taking about five questions. Trial version. We 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 take your trial version. Professor, only if you got the first question before we move to the second person. I, I believe that, that what I'm being asked to speak to is how, in light of what happened in NSAS, how to engage going forward. I believe that is the gist of it. Trial version. Exactly, sir. So, network is. Trial version. The network is not very friendly. Exactly. Yes, sir. Um, Trial well, version. Uh, in Nigeria, it is not new, it's not the news that our election trial version always changes maybe a day or even a few hours before the election. And uh, trial version. we have uh, expected uh, the National Assembly to at least raise a bill that can restrict trial version. the island from changing the election date or time seven days before the election. Trial version. In a situation where it is not so, what do you advise trial us version. to do? That's the first question. And the second question, the INEC trial version. is not a... We see that the INEC is not independent trial version. in Nigeria. It is called independence, but they are not. Reasons being that the INEC trial chairman version. is always... Uh, appointed by the presidency, whereby the, the, he becomes an trial version to the president. What do you and uh, advise us to trial do about version. that? And the third question is, is in, uh, trial version. in this country, we normally run our election with ad hoc. Uh, members of staff trial of the INEC. And these men are projected by the politicians who the trial version that to protect their interests and at the same time manipulate the electoral process. Trial what version. Do you advise us to do about that? Thank you. My name is Reverend Romero Grace. Trial version. Prof, I hope you got that. I got the question is is about elections. Trial and version. The fact that uh, 
Those who run the elections are appointed by the president and the members are appointed on an ad hoc basis. And what it is it that you as a body can do to influence change in that process? I hope exactly. I got it right. Thank you, sir. What, File what version. Person? Trial version. Thank you, Prof, for that explosive presentation. Fact, Trial version. Highly motivated. Prof, our country is bedeviled by Trial this version. commercialization of food. And you know that poverty, the poverty of the youth or the masses is Trial the version. prosperity of our politicians. And this answers also, just as like you said, it's a way of Trial version. the youth to know that we can do more. Prof, now things are difficult, not only in Africa, also in Nigeria. Trial version. And it's one of their key antics to push us down so that during that time, commercialization of food will come Trial back version. to the matters. When you push them to the wall, they have nothing but they will, they will, come, they will demand. And it then gives to us, we'll take Trial it. Version. Those are the masses theory. Prof, as a global pan Africanist and a, a, and a French Trial African, version. youth who want to champion a cause for global uh, change. Uh, change. Trial version. How can you advise us to mitigate this commercialization of votes in Nigeria? Thank you, Prof. Trial version. You got that, sir? I got that. How do you deal with the poverty and what he describes as the commercialization of the vote? Trial right, version. Thank you, sir. Uh, please remember to introduce yourself before you take the question. Trial version. Thank you very much. My name is I work with the University of Boston. And I'm Trial version. University here. My question boils down to youth participation. Many a times we Trial recognize the youth as a change agents, but nobody really tells them about political participation. Many Trial youth are not version. registered in political parties. Most of the times we see it as a result of um, religion tells us sometimes that Trial uh, politics is a dirty game. So we stay out of it because we want to make heaven. It's something we need to change Trial because version. we cannot change um, political uh, actors without being involved. I had a, a recent, um, I had a recent um, talk by uh, the governor of Kaduna State, and he said you cannot chase us out. Trial version. Except you get involved. Because most of the times, youth talk about uh, getting their Trial fair version. share in political participation without being involved. So, Prof, my question boils down to this. How do we start Trial changing version. the narrative? How do we start telling youth to become actors, get involved, register in political parties, Trial and then version. talk about how to become those change agents they want to be? So that's where my question lies. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think you're the first person, right? Trial version. Yeah, the fifth one, please come this way. The fifth one. Yes, yeah, the fifth one, and we take your rest. Trial version. We are the sense Cleo. Trial version. We are the sense Cleo. We have the sense We have the strength to transform the society. Prof, I thank you so much for your wonderful speech. Trial version. Prof, when you were speaking to us, you said something about are you fighting corruption simply because you have not been opportune to be in a place where you can get corrupt? That situation actually got my Trial attention. Version. Prof, I want to be very emphatic with you that the Nigerian system of government has been Trial so much version. commercialized to the point that before you as a change agent, Trial version. like as we have presumed ourselves to be an upcoming change agent, before you get to a place Trial where version. you can effect that change you are anticipating to effect, the road is too narrow Trial and version. full of a lot of turns. Sir, how can we how can we change the narrative Trial version. when before you become a simple House of Assembly member, you set the only plot of Trial land version. your father left behind for you? Sir, how can you be able to change the narrative 
When before you become a counselor, you must borrow a huge amount of money. So I want to know how can this change come when the political process is too bogus that, that we cannot be able to climb to a place where our voices can be heard. So, sir, this is a very little question from me, and I think Trial that version. it comes, um, we have to start it from reform, reforming our political process. Please, sir, is there anything you can tell us, like your idea on how this can be done? Thank you. Trial version. Yes, my name is Comrade Ifai Humphrey from Agua for the Deputy Coordinator of Agua for Local Government of Sis Leo. Uh, we're you. not getting too many questions that will be drowned in the question so that I, I answer the ones that have been asked. Yes, we, we are stopping here. Yeah. So let you me think. start by answering the first question. And, and some of my answers constitute my opinion, which means you must not necessarily agree with me. You could have a different perspective. Trial Question version. number one, as I understood it, when you see young people going to the streets in different Trial parts version. of Africa, it means that they have tried to pursue formal means, and those formal Trial means version. have not yielded any fruits. As Mahatma Gandhi, I think, and Luther King Trial Jr. Version. said a while ago, the demonstrations and civil di disobedience is Trial the language version. of the unheard so that you go out to dramatize Trial your version. dissatisfaction with the status quo but you must also remember that for Trial every version. revolution or every peaceful struggle to have change there will always Trial be version. fifth columnists who will come in your midst in order to become violent Trial and to discredit your movement. It is therefore critical that when you want to engage in activities such Trial as version. that, you must be properly organized and you must have systems and means of Trial weeding version. out fifth columnists whose agenda is to destroy your good agenda. And it is also Trial important version. that you must have structured engagement with existing organs of government, Trial particularly version. if your intention is to change the attitudes of those governments rather Trial than version. to remove them from power. It is therefore critical that the leadership of your organization must be men and Trial women version. who are prepared to sacrifice all and who are prepared to be engaged in proper Trial organization version. for the sake of the movement. Question number two, Trial version. elections in Africa have become an enterprise. A friend of mine who was discussing with me yesterday, the state of the ongoing process of proposed constitution in Kenya, a Dr. Muhisa Kitui, the Secretary General of Anktad, sent me a, sent me a message and said, bad manners cannot be Chained through constitutional Trial version. amendments. Bad manners are things that must be dealt with by Trial changing version. the political morality of a country. And I believe that sometimes, in order Trial to change version. the political morality of a country, you can start by changing the law because the law does Trial not version. make people good, the law does not make bad people good but it stops them from engaging in antisocial behavior because it says to them, if you engage in antisocial behavior, we will punish you. And through punishment, you send a message to others who may Trial think version. and want to behave like them, that if you misbehave, we will cause discomfort to you. Trial to the extent that an average human being does not want discomfort, then good laws can help in society. There is the question across Africa that independent electoral bodies are not Trial sufficiently version. independent. I've never believed that the mere fact that I'm appointed by the president, that, that in and of itself means that I cannot have functional independence. It Trial is therefore version. critical that the men and women who are given the opportunity to serve 
must recognize that their Trial positions version. are positions of honor and privilege, and they owe it to their countries intergenerationally Trial to version. ensure that they conduct themselves properly. But remember also that history has demonstrated that democracy is to be sustained by the eternal vigilance Trial of the version. population. In countries where the population is vigilant, those who want to use their Trial offices version. for short-term political gains know that they can be dealt with firmly. And in that regard, they therefore remain on the straight and narrow. It doesn't work as dramatically and as quickly as we Trial want, version. but history has demonstrated that indeed it can work. And there are examples in the recent past in Africa Trial where version. we have seen electoral commissions saying things that were in favor of democratic processes. Trial version. We have seen that in Namibia. We have seen that in Botswana. We have seen that recently in Malawi. Trial version. And I think that even amidst the difficulties that we have, we have positive examples in Africa. Trial version. It is also true that many electoral bodies during the electoral period must use members Trial of version. staff who sometimes are not well trained. And the reason is very simple. Many players in the political Trial arena version. are men and women who want office by hook and crook because in Africa, the shortest Trial avenue version. to gaining, gaining ill-gotten wealth is the political arena. And that is why people cut Trial throat. Version. That is why somebody can spend a billion while their salary is going to be 100 million simply because Trial they version. know that when they occupy public office, they are going to use influence peddling to make Trial money version. and to steal on an industrial scale to the detriment of the people who themselves Trial are version. so compliant and so subservient that they allow thieves to thrive. In many African Trial countries, version. we celebrate thieves. Even in Nigeria, you celebrate thieves. When James Ibori was a governor, was came to, to Nigeria, he you, you Nigerians elected him. Trial version. When he went to Dubai, he was jailed by the Dubai administration, by the English administration. Trial when he version. came back to Nigeria, you celebrated him. You celebrate thieves. And as long as you celebrate Trial thieves, version. as long as Nigerians celebrate thieves, Ghanaians celebrate thieves, Gambians celebrate thieves, Trial Kenyans version. celebrate thieves, thieves will always run our governments, and African governments will fundamentally be kleptocracies like Mobutu's Democratic Republic of Congo. And you who are sitting there, Trial some version. of you may have taken money from politicians. This is the day that you must repent. And I hope there will be a 30-minute session during your meeting where most of you or some of you have taken money from politicians will say, Trial I took version. money, but today I repent. Unless you do that, you are cheating yourselves. It is our Trial duty version. to repent and to take a vow that we are no longer going to do that, which brings me to the third Trial question version. about poverty. Those who want to engage in corruption always say, is it because we are poor Trial that version. we engage in corruption? No, it is not. The reason why you engage in corruption is because you have low Trial morals version. and you want to reap where you have not sown. That is why in many African countries, even when we claim we are Muslim, we are just thieves. The Prophet Muhammad said that even if you take as much as the eye of a needle Trial on the version. day of judgment, you will be asked to return it. Christ himself also says so, but you people are Trial pretenders, version. many of us are pretenders. On Saturdays we are worshipping, on Sunday we are worshipping, from Trial Monday version. to Friday we are thieves. And the Muslims are also going to the mosques. And then from Trial Saturday version. to the next Friday they are just thieves. So today we must take a solemn vow that we are going, we are going to stop being thieves. And once we stop being thieves, our countries will change. Corazon Aquino of Philippines once said that if the people want to change their government, they must be prepared to suffer. It is only through suffering that you can change your countries. And I'm not saying that you be suicidal. I'm simply saying that you should be prepared to abandon certain comforts for the general good. And that good may not be in your lifetime. 
It could be in the lifetime of your children or your children's children, which brings me to the fourth question. The idea that being youthful in and of itself is a good thing is also misguided. I know many young Africans who are thieves and they are very dangerous thieves because they have no morals. So I'm not persuaded that simply because you are young, then you are better. I also know very many old people who are dignified, who think better than the youth. So don't peddle your youthhood as you are only claim to fame. In any event, youthhood is not a permanent state like being a man or a woman. You are youth today, in 10 years, you'll not be a youth. So use the period of your youth and the energy of your youth to contribute positively to your country. And when we say you are dirty, these politicians, who do they use to destroy things? They use young people. So don't allow yourself to be, to be used because we have cases where people are young. You look at what is happening in the Scandinavian countries in Denmark, in Finland, in Norway, and in Sweden, and look at the age of their leaders. They are most in, in Sweden, I think, or is it in Finland? They are all ladies and they are in their early 30s and they are running a government which is three times bigger than the economy of Nigeria because they have moral anchors. Politics is not dirty. It is the dirty individuals who make it dirty because what is politics? Politics is the organization of human affairs for the general good. Why, that is why the American Declaration of Independence famously, famously said, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are born equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and that it is for this reason that governments are instituted amongst men to ensure that they achieve these. And when a government that does, does not do that, it is the duty of a people to remove such a government. That is politics. We have now redefined politics and we have a perverted meaning of politics and we say that politics is dirty. No, it is we who are dirty. And that brings me to the last question about corruption. You who are saying that you must sell things, if Nigerians, young Nigerians across all the 36 states of Nigeria were to say that we are going to into the political arena and our mantra is we shall pay no cent. We shall ask Nigerians in my constituency to contribute two Kobo each or one Naira each to contribute to my campaign and to offer themselves, you'll try it in election circle one, election circle two, election circle three, election circle four and five, and perhaps the sixth time Nigerians will know that there is a group of young men and women here who have no money, they don't give money, they only are out there to serve. Nigeria is only slightly over 60 years since she regained her independence. I was looking at the history of Switzerland the very first time that Switzerland had a meeting to talk about Switzerland was in the year 1200. Then they had another meeting to renegotiate their country in 1483. Then they had another one in 1884. Then they had another one in 1996. Don't judge countries on the basis of your very short life. A country is here for eternity until the second coming. So as it is, play your part, remembering that you are only a tree in the forest. Don't confuse yourself for the forest. You are just a mere tree. Just be a good tree. You are just a droplet in the ocean. Don't confuse yourself for the ocean. Just be a good droplet. Be a good tree and be a drop of water in the ocean. Um, we will take, I hope we're still online. Trial version. We will take from Chris as well to monitor. Take, take, take two Trial more version. questions so that you allow time for interruption.
Yes. Just take two more questions. All questions cannot be answered in one lifetime. Yes. Trial version. I was in, 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 yes. He's online, sir. Okay. 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 Right. So, Trial version. Uh, yeah, you please come forward. And one person is to you. Trial version. Yeah, you stand this way so that the network and internet and connection and black trial version. Hello, Prof. My name is Moreke John Bosco Yeka. I'm from Africa. Trial version. Prof, you, when we are talking, you say about, it's not about trial version. Trial version. Our political leaders, they come outside the country on medical trips. Trial version. When they give students, they come here now replicating the same thing. Yeah. Trial version. Our hospitals are dead. Our institutions are not to write you about. Prof, may I remind you that our university, our universities are on um, um, strike for over Trial version. Now. We are cause in this country. Or do we not need a trial version to define our cause in this country? Thank you very much. I, I, would, I would ask uh, the moderator to repeat the question. We had difficulties there. We had difficulties with the just repeat the question, uh, the mo Mr. Moderator. Trial version. Why can't they replicate it here? Trial version. He's only asking why can't our leaders replicate what they see abroad here in Nigeria? Okay. Thank you very much. The last question. Thank you, Prof. Uh, my name is Comrade Utekibo. Trial Prof. version. From here, the local government. Prof, my question is during your presentation, trial version. If I heard you clearly, you said that we should emphasize more on that which unites us trial version than that which separates us now knowing fully well that trial version that which unites us as a country or as a nation is our culture trial but version looking at the problem we face on daily basis here in our nation culture or trial our version different culture remains our problem that is the reason why the Igbos trial version. cannot be in peace with the Alsas, and the Alsas cannot be in peace with the Europeans and vice versa. Now, trying to emphasize more on that which unite us, we can see trial that version. the culture is almost the problem or the cause of our problem. Trial version. So how can we now emphasize more on this particular culture which tends to unite us Trial on version. the other hand, it is that same culture that is killing us in this country. How are we now going to emphasize on it? Trial version. Thank you so much, Prof. You have the floor. Those are the last. I've, I've, I've gotten the question. Let Let me just uh, give you an trial version. As I've said, they can allow me a little history. When Ghana regained uh, independence in 1950, Kwame Nkrumah post independence in Ghana in 1958, and he emphasized that it was important for African countries to recognize that. was very six come out and we fulfill ourselves all our all all of us as human beings have different characteristics 
even if you you are evil, they are tall evils, they are dark evils, they are evils from different clans, and therefore there are always things that divide you. If you are in a family, there are girls, there are boys. So if you want to emphasize on those, you'll never quite reach your potential. So he said that, and again in the year 1960, in Casablanca, Morocco, he repeated that. In 1963, when 32 African countries had now regained their independence, there was a meeting on the 24th to the 25th day of May 1963 in Addis Ababa. And one of the arguments that was on the table is whether the colonial boundaries should be renegotiated. Kwame Nkrumah, Gamal Abdel Nasser, Mwalimu Julius Kambarage Nyerere of Tanzania said, we know that we have inherited boundaries that were drawn artificially and arbitrarily. So that in Nigeria, you find the Hausa and the Fulani in a country now called Nigeria, but the same stock are to be found in Niger. You find a people that are called Yoruba, but those same people can be found in another country called Togo and in Cameroon. And you find another people who are from different countries. You come to East Africa, you find the Maasai in Kenya and Tanzania. You find the Luo in South Sudan, in Ethiopia, in Eastern Congo, in Tanzania, in Uganda and Kenya. And they said, if we begin to redraw boundaries, where will we stop? One year later in Cairo in 1964, they agreed and it was included in the Charter of the United Nations, in fact, a year earlier, that the inherited colonial boundaries shall be inviolable. In other words, they will not be disturbed and that the boundaries that we inherited should not be barriers, but they should be bridges. But of course, that did not happen. It did not happen, and today I know that there have been conflicts that have been informed by boundary issues. Between, in Senegal, you'll be familiar with the problem of the Casamans region. You'll be familiar with the problem of Ambazonia in Cameroon. You will be familiar with the problem that existed between Nigeria and Cameroon on the Bakasi Peninsula. You will be familiar with what Dim Chuku Emeka Odumegu Ojuku was engaged in in 1967. And you'll be familiar with the meeting that was held between Ojuku and his representative and his compatriots and the General Yakubu Gowon in Aburi in Ghana. And you'll remember what Ojuku said before the commencement of the Civil War, by Aburi we stand. And you remember the response of General Gowon, by Aburi you shall fall. And you will remember that there was a civil war which ended in 1971. And you'll remember the words of General Ojuku when he said, there are no winners and there are no vanquished, but Nigeria still finds herself in a problem not unique. There are many other countries that have problems. Somalia has a problem. Sudan had a problem which led, and once again, I remember having served as an intern with John Garang, John Garang de Mabior, Garang said, I do not want to divide Sudan, but let the Khartoum government make unity attractive. Why do the Arabs in the North think that they should Arabize us and Islamize, Islamize us? Why do they think that the God that we serve was not wise when he created the Nuer, the Dinka, the Shiluk, and all others? I think that the problem is essentially because we as a people, and particularly the political class, are individuals who are always reminding us of our differences. And as I was saying, the Swedes have four major communities. They have the German-speaking communities, 
the French speaking communities, the Roman speaking community and the Italians and they started having conflict in the 13th century. The first meeting, the pact that created Switzerland, which is now deemed to be a peaceful country was in the year 1291, 1291. The problem did not end. They had a meeting, another meeting in 1803. The problem did not end. They had another meeting, the Confederation Treaty in 1815. The problem did not end. They had another meeting in 1848, the federal constitution. The problem did not end. They had another meeting in 1874. The problem did not end. They had another meeting in 1898. The problem did not end. They had another meeting in the month of December 1998. Let us remember that when you are talking about a nation, you should not be in a hurry. And that is why I have been saying, and I've said it during the SARS movement, that Nigeria and other countries in Africa must be renegotiated. And when we say renegotiation, we are not taking, we are not talking about cessation. We are simply saying, let us have a system of government that allows people to determine, to be self-determined so that they feel they are part of something that is whole. Look at what is happening in Ethiopia now. The federal government is fighting with the region, the Tigray. And even if they subdue them militarily, the problem will not end. The human spirit and her desire to be free can only be sent in comatose. It can no, never be subdued militarily. That is why I think you, the young generation, should now form what I call a pan-Nigerian movement, a pan-Nigerian movement that will bring in the Igbo, will bring in the Yoruba, will bring in the Ibibio, will bring in the Ijo, will bring in the Hausa, will bring in the Fulani and all the 500 cultures and let us agree that this is the Nigeria that we want to live in and create that Nigeria, even in its artificiality, it can be sustained. I'm not talking about the unity of the graveyard where there is unanimity because everybody is dead. I'm talking about unity of purpose where the agenda of the things that concern us are the things that we focus on, where we celebrate our diversity. It can be done and it must be done and you are the ones who can do it. So let us not rush to do things that will destroy us. Because as I said, when you look for things that divide you, you start with Nigeria. Then you discover that you are Yoruba. Then when you go to Yoruba, you discover that you are from Ogun state or from Osun state. And then you go from Western State, you discover that you are from a particular village. And when you stop the village, you go to your clan. And when you go to your clan, you go to your family. And when you go to your family, you discover that your father is polygamous and that you are children of different mothers. And when you go into your own family, you discover that you are boys and girls and you begin to discriminate your one another on the basis of being boys and girls. And then you discover that one is shorter than the other and you discover that one is darker than the other, where do you stop? These are the questions that we must ask ourselves. And there are stories of countries that have thrived in heterogeneity, but the problem that we have is that we have political leaders whose only claim to fame is that they manipulate us. They emphasize the things that divide us in order that they may remain in political office and exploit us. They hypnotize us in the same way like a python or a cobra hypnotizes its prey and we fall for it and we suffer for it. Let us tell them that that shall never come to pass. The last question you ask, why is it that when you travel, our leaders travel to other countries and then they see good things and they like good things but when they come home, they don't like them. They go to Dubai and they love Dubai. They go to Germany and Europe and they love the hostels. And yet they can't build hostels that they can go into. I've never understood the logic of such people. You know, there may be a devil that runs riot in the minds of our political leaders so that they become blinded. How can you explain a person who steals money from his country 
and he is running that country and he has no faith in the country that he's running. Instead, he keeps money in a little island with a population of less than 20,000 people where possibly he needs a visa to travel to. Ask Abacha what became of his money when he died. Ask Mobutu Seseko what became of his money. It is stupid and stupidity sometimes is incurable unless the people rise. So you are the only antidote that can cure this stupidity. Today I was seeing some former Nigerian governor, I've forgotten his name, who is described as the poorest governor who ever reigned as a governor, reigned as a governor in Nigeria. He drives an old Mercedes. He has a farm of 1,200 acres, but generally is believed that he was one of the better ones. But look at your current governors, or indeed you don't have to just think of Nigeria. Look at your typical African politician. They are engaged in what a friend of mine for Igor, Boima Fanbule described as theft on an industrial scale. They are dissatisfied. But one day, if you young people were to rally and rally in earnest, you will teach them that when you retire to sleep, you only need one bed. And when you have a bed of gold, sometimes even sleep disappears and you need sleeping pills. So it is peace of mind that we should have, knowing that that which you earn by the sweat of your brow is sweetest. Even if you have 20 cars, you cannot drive them all. Even if you have a mansion with streets in your home compound, it doesn't matter. Even if you have the most expensive shoes, you can only wear one at a time. And ultimately, this is what we must educate and persuade these individuals that is all vanity of vanity. Is this not said of Solomon in the Bible and Suleiman in the Quran that he had 1,000 uh, 700 wives and 300 concubines. He had them all, the shushan, and ultimately he writes vanity of vanities. Vanity of vanities. The greatest claim to fame that one can have is service to humanity. That is all. Easier said than done, but is worth struggling for. I wish you the very best.